Hi, I'm Margaret Martin at Miller Guide. For those of you who are not familiar with me, I have been a physical therapist for the last 37 years. And in the last dozen years or so, I've dedicated my practice to individuals like yourself who are concerned about their bones, who have low bone density or osteoporosis. And so today's blog is really helping you to um, understand three very important facts about um, your spine and keeping it safe and, and strong. So the first fact um, I'd like to cover is how people fracture. So sometimes you'll read, oh, hardly any fracture. You know, you don't need anything to have fracture. Well, there are things happening. It's just not a big thing that's happening. So when it's little things that occur over and over again, that's referred to as a microtrauma. And so those little things are how we move. So something as simple as, you know, coming forward in a cough or how you reach into the fridge, or how you work in your garden. You know, all these things that happen over and over again that you're putting more loading on the front of the vertebrae. So I've dedicated a blog to this several years ago. So if you want to click on the link above um, at some point to, to go back and, and understand, you know, what's happening inside the vertebral body and why that repeated microtrauma causes the collapse of the vertebrae. So how do you, you know, learn to change how you move? Well, that's where I've created a guide to daily activities. And in that guide that I, this guide in particular is, is video based and you'll have examples of how to work safely in the garden on how to unload your um, dryer, those kind of things where you learn to move more from your hips and your knees and less from your spine. And I recognize with a lot of my clients and so for a lot of you that changing how you move throughout the day is a much harder task than simply doing, you know, a few exercises every day. So I, I, I feel for you, I recognize that, but it's so very important that you take into consideration the micro trauma that happens in just how you're knitting and doing daily activities to keep your spine safe. So the second way that people fracture um, is the macro trauma. And the macro trauma is what happens with something very forceful and big that happens. And so most often that involves a fall, usually a fall to the backside, you know, or even when you're, if you're, your legs are getting weak and you go down and you don't realize the chair is as low as it is and you, and you get that extra few inches and it's a sudden sort of loading through the backside and that pressure that goes up the spine is enough to create, if you have very low bone density, a compression fracture through the spine. So um, learning to have better balance and stability is so very important to control um, or re reduce the incidences of having a macro trauma. And that's where this link here to balance training is so very important. Um, and it's, uh, you know, walking you through a progression of balance exercises all the way from, you know, people that are just recovering from injuries all the way through to an athletic level. So the second important fact when it comes to your bones is that um, understanding the bone density scores that you have and understanding their implications. So you'll have, you know, on your bone density, your doctor will talk to you about, is going to talk about your hips and is going to talk about your spine. Now, when they do a bone mineral density of your spine, they will choose to do it of the lumbar spine. And they choose the lumbar spine, if you can recall lying on the, in the uh, machine, and the scanner is sitting over top of your pelvis, and it goes from the hip and moves up a little bit more to the spine, even though most of the fractures happen higher in the spine. So you're going, hmm, why are they only measuring my lumbar spine? We know that's the last five vertebrae of the spine. They usually will only interpret the first four because then the last one's not always as clear because now your sacrum and your pelvis is getting in a way. And so for the same reason that they don't use that last five, fifth one, they also don't do 
um, a DEXA score of your upper spine. And so, because in your thoracic spine you have a sternum, you have ribs, front and back, that um, are interfering with what the machine can read in the spine. It's just me measuring all the bone and it can't, you know, break down the difference between the bone that it's reading in the sternum versus the spine. So it's just taking an entire value as one. And so that's why your lumbar spine is what you're given, but it doesn't mean that's the only part you have to be careful for. So that you have to extrapolate and go, if my lumbar spine isn't very good, we know that your thoracic spine is likely even worse. And I say that because you have a higher percentage of trabecular or soft bone in the thoracic vertebrae than you do in the lumbar vertebrae. It's just a few percentage points higher, but still significant enough that there's going to be a lower, um, if you could take a bone mineral density, it would be slightly lower in your thoracic spine. And also, based on the microtrauma that I talked at, about at the beginning, when most of us slouch, we slouch from the thoracic spine. And so, it's something to really take into consideration is that when you're going to be looking to exercise, that you have to exercise in a way that strengthens not just the lumbar spine, but also the thoracic spine. When you're looking to move safely, you're looking to move safely not just for the lumbar spine, but also for your thoracic spine. So that gets us into our third point, that exercise matters. So I have a lot of clients that love to do aerobics, they love to do brisk walking and running and all those things we know are great for the hips, but unfortunately they don't do anything for the spine. It's not enough loading. The forces, you know, that ground reaction force that happens when we're hopping and skipping and jumping and walking briskly and doing step ups, all stops at the pelvis. In order to load our spine, we need to align our head over the spines so that we're getting good weight bearing through the vertebrae. That's number one. But most importantly, we need the muscles that are attached to our spine to be pulling on our spine. So that's where the upper body strengthening comes in. So where we're loading the vertebrae in a safe and effective manner, but also very important, especially since you already have a diagnosis of either osteoporosis or of um, osteopenia, that you do it in a progressive manner because you, you don't want to overload a bone that might not already be strong enough to take that load. So if you load progressively, that's going to ensure that you stay safe. So in the exercise link here, I've provided examples of progressive loading. These examples come from my Exercise for Better Bones program that starts with strengthening your postural muscles. Once you feel comfortable and you have your alignment and you have this, you know, the support um, in the postural strength training to start doing things more vertically, then you can um, start, to start to load your spine. And then as you get stronger, you go move into the active and ultimately in the athletic if your fracture risk warrants it. So the important um, message that I want to share here is one is the choice of exercise, the progression of exercise, but also being aware of um, who is sharing that data with you and understanding the data. Because we know that there's been a few studies that, and they've been great studies that have come out of Australia in the last four or five years. They're called the Lift More Study. And having had a chance to um, go to these great conferences on bone health and meet researchers, um, I know that in speaking to the researcher from Australia, she was very explicit about that the, all the exercises done in Lift More were very high intensity. And even though I've lifted for 20 years, I wouldn't be comfortable doing those lifts without a spotter, which is what I said to her. And she said, I agree. She said, everybody had a spotter. And the program um, was uh, 
issued across Australia in designated training facilities that they had training and all individuals had supervision when lifting. Because these lifts are very heavy, when you're squatting with a barbell across your shoulders and you're lifting at 80% of your rep max, which means heavy enough that by the fifth one, you're, you're working hard to come back up, you don't want to be out there and going, I have a bad day and I'm not coming back up and you have you know, 20, 40, 50 pounds or more on your shoulders. So you need to be sure that you're, you're working in a safe environment because if you are failing and no one's there to help you out of your lift, then you can have um, detrimental effects and irreversible effects on your spine. And so the, the goal of choosing exercise to keep your, your spine strong and keep yourself strong is, is a wonderful goal to have, but it's so very important that you do so progressively so that you don't get injured. Because when we choose exercise as an approach to keep us strong, it's not an approach that you take for three months or six months. It's more an approach that you're building on gradually to a lifestyle, a lifestyle of staying strong, um, one that's going to ensure that you have your best posture through into your aging years, that you're not going to be the individual sitting in the wheelchair, that their postural muscles fatigue, you know, after breakfast and you're falling asleep with your head on your chest. And we know that's only going to lead to further deterioration. And so, you know, you want to be, if you're listening to this, I'm assuming you're wanting to be the person that's you know, enjoying time doing the things they love, whether it's gardening, whether it's hiking, whether it's, you know, being with your loved ones, enjoying the activities that are going to keep you young, vibrant, and healthy through your life. So I hope that this blog has helped you. If you enjoyed the blog, please subscribe by clicking the button below. You can hit notifications if you want to get in notif notified about future blogs. And if you want more information about my books, my progressive videos, as I say, each one of them is um, mindful of individuals with osteoporosis, so know that they're all safe for you to, to work on. And you just click in the description box below to get that information. Thanks for joining me today. I wish you a lovely day. Stay safe.